Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor today. I'm very excited to have a very special guest with us. This is Dan Hedrensing. And Dan is a special guest because he has a podcast series with us. He is an award-winning Amazon author. And his books have uh, have been acclaimed um, throughout uh, our uh, in book industry as some of the world's best uh, fiction books in the market. And today we're going to talk about a very special um, a series that he is uh, that he has published that has done very well. And uh, we're going to talk a little about about that. But before we begin, I just want to. Um, uh, just give a shout out to our sponsor and it's dmaworld.com. dmaworld.com is a um, marketing consulting agency. And what they do is they focus on the small businesses. They don't want you to get scammed by those big marketing companies. So they like to work with small businesses to help them grow into large, successful businesses. So check out dmaworld.com and you'll find Mark, the owner, who is there to help you. So I just want to say thank you, Dan, for doing this um, this series with us. I think people are really excited. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback about um, about your uh, your books, and they are just um, people have even told us about how they read your books, and they've had um, they just they just love them. And so, tell everybody a little about what you do and and the books that you write. Thanks, Stacy, for having me on again. I really appreciate it. Um, well, I started writing, let me rephrase that. I started back writing uh, back in 2016. Um, I started working on my first book, which is The Good Fight, which is what we're gonna talk about today. And I just love it so much I kept going. Uh, I love to write, I love to tell stories, and I love to really tell myself the story. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun, uh, you know, making stories and developing them and living through them and finding inspiration for them is 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 just part of my I call it my life therapy, really, because it's just a lot of great time doing it. Yeah, um, I'm a small business owner in Pennsylvania, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I own a uh, business called Detailing Technologies. It's a auto body shop, detail shop, and it's a dealership. And that's how I keep uh, my bread and butter on the table. Um, been here since 1996. I grew up in Sheridan, Wyoming. Big difference. And uh, married my wonderful wife back in 1989. Um, we've lived several different places during the, uh, throughout the country because we're both lay ministers. Mm -hmm. And we take assignments from our ministry to go and uh, teach God's word to people in fellowships and stuff and run classes and do other things. So that's why I've gotten around a lot. We've ended up here in Lancaster for the last 26 years where we started the business, but we still do Christian volunteer work. And we help coordinate, you know, classes and home fellowships and stuff. And uh so in my off time, when I when I get a little time, I, I write. And I've written eight books so far. I got my ninth one in the beginning of the ed editing stages, and I've already started writing my 10th one. So I really like it. And uh, I'm really excited about talk to talk about the last enemy series today because that's my first three books. I you know, I I love fiction books because they just take you away. Um, you know, I like to, when I read, I like to visualize. So I love when I read a fiction story because it just, I visualize the whole scenario in my head and it becomes, it, it becomes like a fantasy world for me. What inspired you to write the last enemy series? Was there like a specific event or idea that sparked the creation of, the, of your story? Well, I think I mentioned this in our last talk, um, but it, the crime of the series it, it's a thriller series mm -hmm. and um the crime that it's based on is something that actually happened in Mannheim back in the early 2000s right um there was a string of uh russian mafia people that uh, moved in and they were uh taking cars and loading them up like the in inside the panels and stuff with uh you know cartel laundered money mm -hmm. and drugs then they were taking them and they were sending these cars to the auction and the uh, and, and selling them to, you know, dealers, supposedly, right. you know, yeah. uh, and that's how they distributed their drugs and their money throughout the country. And uh, so one of them moved in next door to me 
and I was just starting out, just opened up my shot, only been open for about a couple of years. Yeah. And like I said before, there was these two big black SUVs, Suburbans or something that pulled into our lot next door and a bunch of BI guys with camos yeah. and, and yeah. Even had, a couple of them had assault rifles, came out and kicked down the next door uh, business open and started running in there and searching it. And one of the guys came over and talked to us and said he's with the FBI. And he told us the whole story about the crime, asked me what I knew about these guys. said, well, I've done business with them, but I've never seen inside their cars. <laughs> I wasn't a body shop at that point. I was just a detail yeah. shop. But that was interesting. And so, you know, I had a little bit of law enforcement background. I've, I've gone through a lot of training with the um, in West Central Ohio back in the early 90s. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, I kind of understood what was going on. And, you know, I've, I have a degree in journalism. I got that from a place called Casper College in Casper, Wyoming, which is an offshoot of University of Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just kind of left my my writing back in the 80s, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for a newspaper for a little while, but I just didn't like the whole dichotomy of the situation. So yeah. I just moved on to ministry and stuff. And uh, but in 2016, I just really started thinking I want to write again. Right. And one of the big inspirations for me for writing is music. Um, I can envision stories by just listening to some music. Yeah. And Rachel Platten published a song um, called Fight Song back around that time. Um, she, let, she, she released it. Right. And this whole fight song just got me going. Because it was about a girl who was struggling, um, had moved out on her own and was trying to make her way in the world and all that kind of stuff. And that with being in Mannheim and uh, knowing what it's like to be a business owner up there and knowing right. a lot of the business owners up there, I just kind of developed, I started developing this story. Well, what if a business um, a lot bigger than mine was to be attacked by one of these Russian people that wanted to take it over because they wanted to use that facility to to um, facilitate their smuggling of drugs and, and, and laundered money throughout the United States. Wow. And how could that happen? And what would, you know, how would they go about it? Yeah. So the whole situation just developed where, you know, this girl, she's a, she's the daughter of this famous Coast Guard yeah. uh, commander who was a, basically a modern day pirate hunter in the Caribbean. He got very famous, but he, uh, executed a guy at sea that was a rapist and a murderess, but he had to be, he had to retire from the Coast Guard before that, because yeah. of that. So he moved back to Mannheim to help his parents run the business. And, uh, but he had a lot of enemies. And so uh, during the course of the book, there's an assassination attempt on him while he's on an airplane trip with his mother-in-law and his wife. Wow. And so the daughter and her grandfather, Jim, are left devastated and alone with no family, you know, because these, these people are supposedly gone. Yeah. So the daughter gets really heartbroken and she moves to South Texas to uh, be with her maternal grandparents because they have a great big family. Yeah. And, but Jim's kind of heartbroken too, because he owns this big business and the only person he has to leave it to is this girl. Right. So part of the drama of the whole book is, is that you got this Russian cartel mafia individual who I named Boris. He's after the business. But Jim's named Danielle, who's my main protagonist in my first book, as his uh, sole heir. And she's on the board of directors for the business. So he can't make any moves or or, or do anything drastic with the business without her, her signature. So Boris has to target her, too, even though she's down in South Texas. Right. And, and there's romance. There's, there's a lot of intrigue. Uh, she meets a Coast Guard lieutenant who she you know, kind of falls in love with. And then Boris comes after her and he wants to marry, get her married to his nephew because that way he could have, you know, force Jim to uh, sign over the whole business to the happy couple. And then he's going to kill off the Edwards. And so I don't want to give too many spoilers, but that's yeah. how the book started. And what really I think people liked about that book was that Danielle, one of my favorite, um, uh, things that somebody said about Danielle is, is she is no damsel in distress. It's one of the favorite reviews from online book club. That's one that she says she's no damsel in distress. 
And, you know, I, I had her like growing up being trained by her daddy. Her daddy taught her martial arts. Her daddy taught her how to think, you know, made it real tough. And so when she was uh, confronted with all these bad guys coming after her grandpa and coming after her business, she fights back. Right. And she does it really well. And at the end of that book, I leave a little cliffhanger in there where Danielle finds out that her mom and her dad and her grandmother might still be alive. Wow. And so that's the good fight. And so that everybody really loved that. And that book got a lot of traction. And so, and I really thought that the next book that I would write would be The Last Enemy. And see, here's, here's my first three books. This is The Good Fight. This is The Last Enemy. The reason that there's a book in the middle is I, I introduced this character throughout the narrative of the first book, and her name is Marnia Gonzalez, and she's the daughter of a Mexican president. Yeah. In the beginning of the book, when Jacob is forced to, well, he isn't forced to, he kind of loses his temper, but he executes this guy. He catches this guy trying to rape and kill this girl on a cruise ship off of Cosimal. And um, he rescues her, he saves her life. And then he takes him up to the tallest part of the ship and throws him off. Oh, wow. And so after he gets his mind back, he places himself under arrest and orders his ship to take him back to, you know, to the authorities of the United States. But this girl, you know, everybody liked her in um, The Good Fight because I, I introduced her as part of the people that were in the rescue team that came after to save Danielle from Boris. Right. And so I thought, I need to develop this this story about this girl more because yeah. she's also a hero. And uh, I even showed in in uh, the last, you know, in The Good Fight that her nickname was the Cartel Crusher. So how was I going to do that? So um, I, I, I retell the whole story about the, um, in the first chapter of The Cartel Crusher, I retell the whole story about how Jacob Edwards rescued her on the cruise ship, but from her point of view, not from his point of view. And uh, so after that, you know, she goes and tells her dad that she doesn't want to go to law school. She doesn't want to be a politician like him. She wants to go yeah. in the military. And then she wants to be in the anti-cartel task force, which is a real thing in Mexico. They actually started yeah. developing this back in that about 10, 15 years ago, some of the presidents. And she wanted to be a part of that. And she wanted to follow in her hero, Jacob Edwards' footsteps. So things happen and she does actually get involved with that task force and she does get promoted and she get, does get authority. And she ends up taking down like four cartels. And at the base of all these cartels is this guy, Boris, who is the main money launderer for yeah. the Mexican cartels down in down in that area? So she has to deal with him too, indirectly. But right. uh, she, you know, he he. So he's she she gets on his list, you yeah. know, to target. So the the cartel crushers about Marnia Gonzalez and how she rises up to be like this big uh, cartel hunter. And there's a big military fight in the end where she leads this army into this guy's uh, hacienda when he's got all these armed gangsters and stuff with them and she defeats yeah. him and he, he dies in the end. But um, she also develops a relationship with one of the cartel bosses in Mexico and they, they fall in love and uh, it looks like they were going to live happy, happy, happily ever after. But what I show when he goes home to his dad, who's the big cartel boss, he's one of the big three, and uh, he takes him into this hospital room and he shows him three people lying on beds that are all knocked out. And it's Mar it's uh, Danielle's dad, mom and grandmother that he kidnapped off of that plane right. from the first book. So you got these two books just totally tied together now. And yeah. so then I wrote The Last Enemy. The Last Enemy is basically um, everybody confronting everybody and uh you know, they go after Boris, the head guy. Jacob is released. He gets back with his um, his wife and his mother. His mother get back with uh, you know Jacob's dad and Danielle and some other people. And so that's pretty much the story. I don't want to give too many spoilers on how it all no. ends, but you know this uh, it, they, it's a big confrontation and all that. And I do show a lot of 
biblical principles, believe it or not, in there. Yeah. I, I show prayer. I'm talking about all three books. I show right, prayer. Right. I show like, uh, you know, resolve mm -hmm. and um, belief in God being in charge and helping them and stuff. And right. and in the end, they actually, that's how they take down the bad guys. They 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 get help from above. So I've had a lot of good, um, you know, feedback from these books. And they're really, a lot of my characters after that developed from these books. So, you know, the other um, five books that I wrote, except for Magi Apprentice, the, the other four that I wrote, go off of, the, of, the, of these three books. There's, there's characters in these three books that are in the rest of them, but it's all like, you know, backstories or, you know, prequels or stuff like that. So I really have enjoyed uh, The Last Enemy. You know, I think I finished, uh, I started writing The Last Enemy series in 2016, and I yeah. finished the, the Last Enemy, I think, 2019. And uh, one of my favorite quotes about the cartel crusher is uh, this girl that wrote a review for the online book club again. She quoted, uh, she said, give a girl the right pair of shoes and she can conquer the world with Marnia Gonzalez. It was a pair of army boots. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cool. That is very cool. You know, she became the main character of the book, really. And, you know, did you use a lot of your own experience of what you went through with them, with with having the, those people lit by your, uh, next door to your business or from your own um, experiences, um, knowing knowing um, uh, about military and knowing about law and stuff like that? Or did you have to do a lot of research to to make it more realistic? But yet, you know, um, you're still in that fantasy fiction world. A lot of both. Like I said, I did a lot of training with um, with. Uh, law enforcement back in the early 90s yeah um, you know and also with uh emergency medical and uh EM emt stuff and then firefighting and uh security and all that so I, I did a lot of that back then learned about firearms and stuff like that but one of the great things is my son is uh in the united states coast guard mm -hmm. and so obviously you know my my character Jacob Edwards is modeled after him. In fact, the, the book that I wrote called The Commander, I dedicated to him. Oh, how nice. Um, so I got he was one of my great resources in understanding like all things Coast Guard, all that yeah. stuff. That really helped a lot. Um, a lot of research. Yeah, a lot of research into crime and stuff is as far as how what happened with that case with those Russian mafia guys and how it was, it was a huge network of stuff that was going on all over Mannheim and yeah. then other auctions. And they really had, and I tell you what, it changed the whole uh, structure of how these, these auctions work because now they're searching inside of cars. They're, you know, sometimes they're, they're using high definition photography wow. to look in there and try to figure out if there's anything hidden in the panels and stuff like that. So it's, it, it's, it's changed everything. It's also made it more difficult for us to, get cars passed by, by their condition reports yeah. <laughs> because they're really scrutinizing them now you know you get a little scratch yeah. or something it looks like it's three feet big when they put it on the picture <laughs> you know so what do you think yeah so i had go ahead oh no go finish finish oh i was, I was just finishing up what i said yeah just uh the the whole thing about the Mannheim auto auction and what they had to do since that happened has really affected the entire business um, but you don't see people smuggling stuff through cars anymore right? Um, at these auctions. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Now, you know, you, you're an award um, winning bestseller on Amazon. Why do you think your book may it stood out so much? Why do you think people gravitated to it so much like they did? One of the things I do as a writer is I use um, the third person present tense in my writing. And I'm a journalist, or I was, I was trained as a journalist back in the 1980s. And my um, my journalism instructor, a man named Dr. Dan Jones, later on became a dean down in um, uh, Texas Tech. He was mm -hmm. one of the dean of, of literature down there. Uh, he taught us to write our stories, not only from, I don't know if you ever heard of the inverted pyramid, mm -hmm. where... A story is written where you give all the information that's pertinent at top, 
and you kind of just narrow it down so that people can read the first three or four lines and they can get everything they need to know and then go from there. Well, that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's general journalism training, but he taught us also, which is very popular in journalism, to write in the third person present tense. And what he said was, is we have to compete with the news services, you know, the, 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 uh, video TV news and all that kind of stuff. And he said, you have to make, your story sound like they're living it right now right you know like where they you know it's present tense and it's third person so it's got yeah some people call it like an omniscient view where you can just see everything it's like watching a movie yeah and i really gravitated towards that when i started writing and i didn't even realize that i was writing my first book in third person present tense until i sent it to my editor and he said that the guy that I hired to be my editor, and he said, you know, you write third person present tense. That's not normal for writing. Most most writing is first person, simple past tense. Yeah. And I go, oh, and I go, well, this just feels really easy for me. And then I had to I had to go back and think about it and go, well, it's because it's the journalism background. Yeah. But what what it has done, what the comments that I have gotten from people is that they 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 feel the action. Yeah. Right when they're reading it, you know, it's the, it puts them right there in the action and they're seeing everything just like they're watching a movie. And so that's what I, that's why I've stuck with it. And at first I got a little criticisms here and there from it. But, but now uh, most of my um, fan bases, they love it. I get lots of good comments about it, especially with the fight scenes and the action scenes and stuff like that. It really, really helps draws them in. Yeah. You can't go too long with that or you'll wear them out. Exactly. And that's something I had to learn. You know, you have to kind of like, pull back on the action and, and, and show some other stuff, but it, it is nice to have it. And it's kind of nice with the, with the romance scenes too. People like that. They like seeing both, not just hearing it from one person's point of view, but both of them. Right. You know? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I kind of like that, that you wrote it in, you know, uh, first person, um, third person present tense, because I, mm -hmm. I, I personally like when I read fiction books, I like feeling like I'm in 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 the situation with them right then and there because it makes me feel a part of the book I and mean, it draws me in, you know. So I I think that's really good that you did that. I, I like that a lot. Now, if, if people want to learn more about you, where can they find you on the website? Well, uh, best place to go is my my website, which is danehendrickson.com, and it's spelled right at like it sounds. It's just lowercase Dan, little e. Then Hendrickson, H E N D R I C K S O N dot com. And all my books and all the best, you know, the reviews and all the awards and everything else are right there. So you can look up descriptions of the books. You can actually buy the books right there on the website. Um, there are links not only for me to like, you know, sell you a book from my stock and it could be right. autographed and all that kind of stuff, but there's also links to Amazon and Barnes and Noble and that yeah that's a good way to do it and you know we're we're digital and and uh you know soft bound hard bound so we got all the we got all the bases covered and actually these first two books are in audio so oh, i had that excellent. done a couple of years ago yeah so the good fight and the cartesian kill pressure are available on amazon in audio and the uh, last annual come out enemies audio will come out here in a year or so we'll see what but uh, my one book that I wrote a few years ago called Brandy Palette of a Pirate Princess, that was so popular that I chose to have that one put in audio before I was going to do this one because everybody was it just that thing went off the charts as far as popularity. Wow. I love it. I love it. I, I love the whole the whole theme of, of your books. I it, it's very I like the action. I like being in it. I like I love it. You know, and I'm I'm reading one of your books right now and uh I, I'm I'm really getting into it. I think it's amazing, and um, you know I, I highly recommend people to to read your books because I I feel like I'm I'm in the book at the present moment, you know, and and I like that feeling. And uh, I'm actually going to do a write up for you and and you know and and share with people how I I feel about your book because I want everyone to know you know a little about what it's about and and how it really affected me as as a reader. 
And uh, so you'll be seeing that soon. I'll be putting that on my website, thecompleteherbalguide.com. And then I'll be putting it on other platforms for people to read, you know, once I finish your book. But I, I, I really do like your books a lot. Like, you know, I, I've always been a big nonfiction reader, but, you know, when I do get a hold of a fiction book that I really get into, you know, I really, I really enjoy myself because I, I like, I've always liked fantasy, maybe because I'm a Pisces, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I, you know, but I always gravitate to a good, a good book that, you know, good fiction book, but uh, you know, it's, it's nice when you can actually find those good fiction books. Cause just like a TV show, sometimes they're hard to find, but when you do find them, you really do get really into it. And it's like a, a turn pager where you don't want to stop, you know? And that's how I kind of feel right now when I'm reading your book, it's like, you don't want to stop. You want to keep going and going and going. But uh, yeah, I, I love these. And if people wanted to go to, um, if they wanted to go to uh, Barnes and Nobles or if they wanted to go to Amazon, can they find your books there? Absolutely. I mean, you could just use my name um, on Barnes and Noble or uh, Amazon. You can definitely find it, all the books there. Yeah. I'm actually reading this one right now, Maggie Apprentice. Uh, yeah, so and that's I've... that's that's a that's a historical fiction, and yeah. I wrote that in third person present tense, and that was a little difficult because you're doing historical, but I exactly. really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, I like and I like I like how you write it, and so Thanks. it's really you, you've been doing a great job. I I really enjoy your books a lot. I really enjoy them. So you know, I I'm looking forward to hearing more about your books. Now, you I know that you'll be coming on the show um, to talk more about your other books and to you know share about your writing and stuff like that. Now, before we go, if you can give a couple of tips to you know, there's so many people out there that have always you know said you know I've always wanted to write a book, but I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. You know, do you have any tips for for inspiring writers that you know have you know always wanted to write a book, but they just don't know where to begin as a writer can you give any tips tips anybody well honestly you just got to start um you know I wish I would have started earlier than I did uh back to writing because I, I you know I went into journalism but I always thought that I'd write fiction uh I liked journalism because it was like it looked like it would be a career path as well yeah you know, something that you could do until you got popular as a, as a novelist but right you know, and then I, I got kind of disenfranchised with that for different reasons. And um, I went away and started doing other things. But I, I wish I would have just kept writing because um, you only get good at it when you start it. If you got an idea, just try it out. And I think one of the biggest things that holds people back is they don't think they're good enough. Yeah. What I mean is they're afraid they're going to make mistakes. They're afraid they're going to spell a word wrong. They, they're afraid they're going to phrase it wrong. You're never going to get good unless you start doing it, you know, yes. and I just, I wrote my very, I wrote this book, um, you know, when I wrote, and I, I've had, I've been to college, I've been trained a little bit, but I wrote this book, you should have seen it, it was like, yes, my wife, it was like one single paragraph. <laughs> the whole thing it didn't have any breaks to it or anything you know and and my 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 wife and my daughter my daughter she's in she's a grammar nazi she's a <laughs> ABC, she's an abc reporter in, in philadelphia and, and she was a straight a college student and she she you know english was her subject right big time and she went after this book for me she actually she actually edited it for me for as a christmas present um, oh how nice it, so that I didn't even know she was doing it. And she handed it to me on Christmas, all edited and stuff. That was cool. But I just learned. I just continued. I just kept writing. In fact, one of the things that there's a man over in the Philippines, his name is Grant Leishman. And he uh, he's an author over there. And he's also a, a pretty well-known um, reviewer. And, and he does commentaries on books and stuff. He writes for magazines. And he, he picked me up um, when I first did the good fight and he gave me a four out of five stars for my first edition now this is this is actually the second edition of the book but for the first edition of the book he gave me four out of five stars on reader's favorite and he was very complimentary and he said some things where you know where i could improve and so i took everything to heart and i did change it and make a second edition but then i wrote this book the cartel crusher and using his uh 
you know, criticisms and stuff, yeah. I, 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 I improved and I published this book and he, he reviewed that for reader's favorite. And yeah. his, uh, his comment was that he had seen such a growth spurt in my writing that he made a big deal about it on the, um, on the review. And he said, man, I just love this book. This book was fantastic. He's, he said that uh, he couldn't put him down. In fact, every one of my books that I've ever, that he's ever reviewed for me read, he says he's basically read them in one or two sittings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't write really long books. I mean, like I'm between uh, 70 to 80,000 words, which is like a 250 to 300 page book. Um, with That's the actually set, a good size. Of, yeah. Magi Prince was a little bit more. Um, when I when I wrote it, it was one hundred and six thousand words. When it went to my editor, Tom Hyman, it came back to me ninety six thousand, which is always a good. That's that's one of the editors. That's what editors do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it came back ninety six thousand. So it's a little over three hundred pages. But you know, I'm who's I'm constantly reading books four hundred and fifty, five hundred, six hundred pages these days. I, I don't know if I'll ever write a book that long. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes back to the. Uh, the third person present tense where right. you don't want to wear them out yeah you know you give them a good story a good movie like story and, and give it a good solid ending and i think that's another one of my uh my long suits as a writer is i always know the ending before i start when you yeah. talk about giving advice to people they got they got to know what gets them started like to me i don't start writing a book until i know how it's going to end Exactly. Some people are just the opposite. You know, they, just, yeah. they know how to begins and they just let it go. If that's you, that's great. But what you got to do is you got to find that. You got to find that point that gets you going. To me, exactly. when I get the ending in my head, when I know how I want to, this protagonist, how to end this story, you know, and all this stuff, how everything comes together, then I can write the whole book and get there. So that's another thing maybe uh, an aspiring author would want to do is figure out what's their point that helps them to write the story is it knowing the end ending is it knowing the beginning is it mapping it out with a outline yeah whatever but you just got to have you got to find something to get you going with that but i have that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah with those advice. are amazing yeah, those that's great advice that, you know, I, I think that, you know, you really gave some really, really, really good tips right now. I think that's excellent because I think that's one of the biggest things that people who read a lot of books and they they always, you know, make comments, you know, that they always, you know, wanted to write it, but they just didn't know how to begin. And, and the tips you just provided, I think, are amazing and that could actually help somebody. And also, I love how you just, you know, you know, told people you know, how practice makes perfect because, you know, I can't tell you how many people, including myself, you know, when we first started writing, you know, I, I've had, I've talked to some of the greatest writers and they have made the best sellers list and in the New York times list. And they all say, you know, when they first started writing, their writing was horrible. And they look back at what their books look like. And they look back now at how their books look like. And they don't feel embarrassed because it, they, they actually feel proud because, all that practice. That's a growth. Yeah. It's a growth. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And thank you so much for giving those tips. I think I think they're very excellent tips for people who really want, are inspired to either write a fiction book or even write a nonfiction book, whatever their dream yeah. or their ideas. Go for it. I say go for it. Now, before we leave, I want you to just tell people one more time your website, get it in their brain so they don't forget it. It's danehendrickson.com. So it's just, and lowercase, just, you know, www.dan, D A N E, lowercase d, then Hendrickson, H E N D R I C K S O N.com. It'll take you right to my website. Um, you know, you, you, I've got all kinds of stuff on there. I've got podcasts, I've got interviews that I've done that I've been, that people have interviewed me. Um, I've got all kinds of reviews from Kirkus and other sources on all my books. So, you know, anything you want to know about my books, you can basically find there. And we're also going to uh, provide in our description the your website address also, so that way they can go to it and they can check out all your books and they can find out where they can purchase them and get a, a really good read. So thank you so much, Dan. I, I really enjoyed having you on the show again. I can't wait to have you back on the show as we discuss your other books and, and go over other topics. But thank you so much for being here and taking the time out to share about your book and to you know make people aware 
tomorrow, how they could be an inspire, you know, inspiring writers as well. So thank you so much for coming back on the show. And everybody, I want you to know that Dan is doing a podcast series with us. So check out, he has his own podcast on our site. Look for him and you'll see his face and check out all the different podcasts that he has done already. Um, they're amazing. So check it out. Thank you so much, Dan, once again, for coming on the show. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too.